Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, in today's video, we'll be discussing upon <coughs> some fundamentals of uh, mechatronic systems and uh, <coughs> and associated um, control systems in case of uh, the mechanical and uh, uh, electrical systems that are related with the uh, mechatronic systems. So let us move on to the first part that is uh, the contents of this lecture. Uh, we have some fundamental introduction to the mechatronic systems and then uh, mechatronic system components, some measurement systems, control systems and their types. And then uh, we have some uh, real time applications like a washing machine <coughs> and an automatic camera, then engine management system, etc. So uh, let us move on to the next part. Uh, uh, when it comes to mechatronic systems, uh, uh, the general definition uh, would include that it it is a synergetic integration of sensors, actuators, different types of signals, and then their conditioning, power electronics, and decision making and control algorithms and computer hardware and software together uh, that merge into a complex system that uh, uh, certainly uh, give uh, some typical communication to an engineering system. Uh, so that's the working definition. So that means it got all the sensors, actuators, and signal conditioning and some electronics which are capable of making some decision then it got some complex algorithms which are engineered to give a perfect solution for a particular realistic problem so uh, if you consider uh, this figure we got the central part as mechatronics so mechatronics do have computers then mechanical system digital uh, control systems and control systems as such control electronics electronic systems Electromechanics and mecha pure mechanical systems. So, mech so if you just uh, just check the outer peripheral ring, uh, it got everything into it. That is that varies from materials processing, automotive, aerospace, medical, uh, then xeroxography, and then defense systems, consumer electronics, manufacturing systems, and whatnot. So, mechatronics deal with every realistic problem that can be accomplished by some typical control system which requires some electronics and software together we just uh, uh, just check into this figure we got some information systems mechanical systems electrical systems as well as some computers and electrical systems together which uh, synergetically integrate to to give a perfect solution for any typical realistic problem so when it comes to different uh, the disciplinary foundations for mechatronic systems, we got three basic branches uh, uh, that are there that that includes mechanical, electrical, and computers. And uh, nowadays, computers and information systems are generally considered to be together. So uh, uh, they are basically three. So uh, in this case, it is shown as four. So all these disciplines together work together in order to give a solution. The best example for this is an automated car. So for designing an automated car, you require uh, the mechanical uh, guy, uh, which is uh, uh, which is basically an engineering guy, and then for the control part, he there there might be a requirement of uh, control electronics and control systems in it, especially when it comes to uh, the safety part. So um, apart from that, the, all the programming concepts are done by a computer engineering guy. And any typical transfer of information between any typical system, for example, engine and braking, steering and engine, and then uh, your, your safety part and communication with the system itself. So all together uh, gives a perfect solution. So when a mechatronic system is designed, so they require fundamentally all these typical people who have the background, who are experts in this in order to give a perfect solution. So uh, when it comes to applications, um, there are a wide range of mechatronics applications that vary from your day-to-day -day, uh, home security camera, then microwave oven, toaster, dishwasher, laundry washer, climate control units, that's your air conditioning unit, and then digital cameras, etc. So all these things together uh, form a mechatronics uh, system, complete mechatronics system. We got some day-to-day uh, -day applications like your DVDs, VCRs, medical implants, then assisted surgery devices, haptic devices that are basically robotics, defense systems, manufacturing systems that uh, include CNC's, numerical control machines, RPTs that are your 3D printers which are very much popular these days, robotics, and then automotive systems that include anti-lock braking system, active suspension, cruise controls, airbag, engine management system, etc. 
and network centric uh, applications like distributed robots tele robots intelligent highways etc so megatronics deals with every problem that has a perfect solution which is already there and then if you want to automate it so uh, the megatronics inclusion will will give you a much better experience uh, with the megatronics applications so if you just check the uh, robotic examples we have some humanoid robot here and then all uh, mobile robots that include uh, a tri-wheel robot and then you have a two-wheel robot and then legged robot so there are some sensors that are associated with these things so sensors will give an input uh, to these systems then they work accordingly with the actuators so another example for this is uh, a, a simple robot that can track a line which can avoid some collision etc so what is the fundamental merits and demerits of a mechatronic systems the the primary advantages that would include the cost effectiveness and the quality products that are delivered high degree of flexibility in modification of a design so nowadays you can just check every week one single uh, cellular company releases a, a brand new mobile phone so that is because of the flexibility in the redesigning concepts then very good uh, performance characteristics day by day the performance characteristics of uh, systems like your pcs laptops and your day to day applications like your washing machines etc they have a very good performance characteristics that means they'll outreach all these existing systems in case of their performance and uh, they got a wide range of applications right from your medical implants to the robotics and not only that you have wide range of application in case of uh, 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 satellites you have aerospace stations that are there and the next part is the productivity uh, in case of manufacturing unit so nowadays uh, product launching has become very much uh, quite easier task for any uh, manufacturer so greater productivity can be achieved by imparting a better mechatronic system into their organization which is uh, more uh, mechanical or more uh, 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 human uh, uh, based uh, production unit and then you can utilize the uh, machine uh, in a greater way by uh, adapting new technologies like optimization etc into the existing models so that would give a greater extent of uh, machine utilization and then the second uh, part of the counterpart of this would be the disadvantages the the primary problem with any typical uh, uh, mechatronic system implementation would require a lot of initial cost and uh, you require good engineering and multidisciplinary background uh, candidates in order to design and implement your system you require highly trained workers and uh, the complexity in identification uh, uh, of, a, of a particular problem would be very tough and then correction would go much tougher so you require expertise in all the cases as well as high amount of cost is involved so the best example is if you want to uh, set up a, a new mobile manufacturing unit so you require a lot of concepts if you want to set up one typical uh, what do you call <clears throat> implant uh, uh, manufacturing unit you require very high expertise level for developing such things because they're all uh, life uh, related uh, things and all so that's all about the uh, merits and demerits let us move on to the next part which one is the fundamental elements of the mechatronic system so if you just check the the block diagram of this uh, uh, you have a mechanical system and uh, a control part so that would include uh, actuators so actuators uh, so we'll start from the sensors rather than actuators because sensors will give an input to a system that would include switches fundamental potentiometers strain gauges mems en encoders etc all these things are sensors so these sensory data whatever you obtain uh, has to be processed into a signal conditioning and interfacing unit for uh, the proper processing that would include uh, uh, discretization circuits that is uh, uh, digital converters and analog uh, to digital converters and then amplifiers filters for removal of noise amplifiers for improving the signal strength that would be processed on to the next part which is a digital control part which has some digital control architectures that varies from a plc a logic controller a microcontroller and associated algorithms and programs that would execute your output signal uh, based on the input and you have the logic that is associated with your system that exists in this particular thing so your output signal has to be again converted and signal conditioned in order to make your activators work for example your sensor input is for example uh, let us say 3 volts which can give only like 
uh, 0.3 volt signal so that has to be amplified then processed by your uh, typical uh, microcontroller or your PLC so that works with 24 volts so again 0.3 volts has to be converted on to 24 volts and then for example your activator works with uh, let us say uh, 500 volts or 230 volts that has to be processed here by uh, uh, improving the quality of signal that would include uh, what do you call uh, uh, amplification and then con control for typical um, activators like solenoids which go on and off so when it comes to our uh, activators we got some solenoids and then uh, you have some DC motors, stepper motors and some coils that would activate your system. So your output whichever that is being processed um, has to be uh, uh, what do you call given an input by this uh, uh, by, uh, to this uh, activators in order to uh, make your task done. And then in between you whatever the signal that has been displayed you have some leds some monitors crt monitors lcd monitors led monitors and some mimic displays and then hmi human machine interfaces in order to uh, given uh, input and output to this particular output signal so uh, that's all about the overview of the mechatronic system now we'll start with uh, the next part that is the differences between mm, the actuators and the sensors so actuators will uh, always produce some mechanical action uh, so that is uh, about the actuators so in case of sensors they will only detect the parameters and then feed this to the inputs uh, so some actuators that would include hydraulic pneumatic linear activators rotary activators some dc motors stepper motors servo motors all these things are actuators which produce some mechanical action whereas in case of sensors that would include linear uh, some rotational uh, activators, acceleration, sensors, force uh, that, that, that can measure the force torque in case of your application. So that's all about the differences between the sensors and actuators. So let us move on to the next part. That is uh, uh, all typical uh, sensors. You have some la laser range finders that you could see on a Google car. Some lever switch that is a very fundamental on and off logic. You have some metal detectors, infrared sensors some uh, light detection uh, cells and uh, radiation detection cells sonars you have some accelerometers and some gps cameras passive infrared sensors etc all these two things together uh, uh, include to form your sensor uh, collection so uh, so let us move on to the next part which is uh, uh, the the control system part so control systems are very narrowly classified into two when it comes to uh, a feedback system or a feedback less system so in case of open loop you don't have any feedback that means your input that has to be processed has to be given on to your control part the control part will go on and off or maybe uh, continues on and off in this case we have seen a simple electrical fire that is just like your induction oven or an induction stove where based on your switch input uh, your electrical fire will go on and you will get a temperature change this is uncontrollable so there is no sensor to measure it and give a feedback to the input which will go on and off so these systems are generally very very quick in response but they lack accuracy similarly when it comes to a closed loop system we have some input that is required we have a intelligent agent or intelligent part that is your comparison element which will give an input to your uh, the control part which is switch and an electrical fire system which will vary uh, the current thereby there will be a output in terms of temperature so your temperature is being measured by a simple um, RTD or a thermocouple which is a sensor there and it will give an input to this so you have a comparison between your output and input so thereby it controls on and off this uh, particular control part so when it comes to uh, uh, a closed loop uh, system we have like a comparison element which is very intelligent one a control element these two uh, uh, together uh, uh, forms a control element and the correction part which is your intelligent part so these two together will work um, along with the comparison element to give an intelligent action some process elements in previous case we have seen a simple thermocoil which will uh, go on and off so that's the process and you have some process elements so the process element might be your um, uh, coil uh, and the process uh, uh, measurement element that would be your uh, temperature uh, detector or your RTD or a simple thermocouple so in this case, uh, the control variable would be the room temperature. Uh, we, are, we are dealing with the room temperature uh, measurement unit, which will go on and off. For example, a thermocoil is used for heating up the room. So you have a control variable, which is the room temperature. You have a reference that is your room temperature, again, required room temperature in this case. 
we have a comparison element that is that will measure uh, the differences between the required and the uh, the current uh, room temperature by which you can generate an error signal and control unit would be the person which uh, a person generally controls the thing so that's the control unit part so correction unit would be on and off so here in this case the on and off action has to be taken automatically so the the per the personal intervention intervention would go zero here followed by you have a measuring unit a thermometer so uh, this is the fundamental uh, uh, elemental part like fundamental part for a, a room temperature control unit and uh, we have some differences between these two we have an open loop system uh, on the uh, left part and the closed loop system on the right part so we have uh, uh, in open loop system we don't have any feedbacks that's the reason they are very very less in case of accuracy this construction is pretty simple and then optimization it is not at all possible in this it is easy for maintenance but the biggest problem is the accuracy level is very very low and the response is very high in this case in case of your closed loop you have most accurate feedback but uh, the, the complicatedness that exists in the construction and uh, optimization of the control that is tuning of the parameters that are required uh, to get a better output is possible in this and they are a bit difficult to maintain uh, maintain the thing and then uh, uh, the cost is a bit more so you have some fundamental uh, 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 differences between these two things and some examples were given over here so that is uh, uh, in case of your CD deck it is just open and close so there is no control it will run at a particular RPM there is no control but uh, nowadays even those are under control uh, uh, you have a digital thermometer so there is no control for that it's an open loop system and in case of an automatic water level you have uh, a top and bottom switches which will go up and down based on the level raised in the tank and you have an automatic washing machine that will uh, you most of you guys know about what is the automatic washing machine i did not explain much upon this so let us move on to uh, the next part so sequential control uh, which is a very very uh, crucial uh, thing when you are dealing with uh, control system control systems in uh, uh, industrial process um, so the sequential control can be explained in a better way using a best example yeah, you just assume a bottle filling station in, in a typical uh, uh, cool drink uh, manufacturing unit. So all the things has to be uh, taken care of followed by a sequence. For example, right from picking up a bottle from a tray and then um, uh, what do you call make movement of the bottle underneath your filling unit. Then uh, fill the bottle with the required amount of liquid that is actually uh, capable of uh, uh, the hold uh, for the bottle. Similarly, and closing the bottle with a cap and then dispensing it for packing. So this is a sequential control uh, example that can be uh, explained in a very simple way. So uh, when it comes to the definition part, uh, which has uh, some uh, individual steps that are to be processed in a predetermined order progression from one sequence or one step to the other step, depending upon the defined conditions that are being satisfied. That means your sequential control have uh, some predetermined order so the every particular process should follow this predetermined order and uh, it has to progress from one sequence to other sequence in the example what we have uh, discussed just now it is uh, like right from the moment of the bottle to the filling part and then uh, lowering and uh, 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 making the liquid to pass on to the bottle to fill in the bottle and then uh, raise of the uh, filling unit and then bottling uh, as well as the capping part and then moving on to the packing unit so so all these things are guided by some sensors in an automatic uh, sequential control part so let us check uh, one good example for the sequential control so uh, uh, any typical washing machine is uh, a sequential control process so you have uh, your washing machine drum here and then uh, some fundamental uh, inputs that are being fed to the washing machine drum that would include your pump which will feed the water and then valve which will go uh, which will hold make the water to hold in the drum when the process goes on and when the process is done it will release the valve so that the the, the drain whatever the drain liquid that is present will be transferred on to your uh, the external unit then heater in case of uh, automatic washing machines we have some heaters that are present which will heat to a predefined set point temperature and you have a motor that will drive this uh, washing machine drum to and fro for uh, a better wash. And uh, to control all these correction elements, we have some control units. 
that control unit will get the feedback from your outputs that is through sensors for example water level then water temperature drum speed whether the door is closed or not let us check uh, how this what what uh, particular cycle uh, will uh, work so what washing machines will have predetermined programmed cycles uh, right from uh, rinsing then washing drying spinning and then uh, followed by your uh, final execute final output cycle that is opening your door so uh, in case of any typical washing machine we have all this process so for example if you just take the rinsing cycle so for rinsing cycle the sequence would uh, uh, turn up like this so you give an input for the washing machine control unit that in terms of a program so that program will give uh, an input command to the pump to pump a, a predetermined level of the liquid based on the uh, uh, number of clothes you use or the maximum uh, capacity of the washing machine so that once the thing is done the water level indicator will send a feedback followed by your heating uh, and then uh, followed by your to and fro motion of the uh, washing machine drum by the motor and then followed by opening and closing uh, of the valve for making the uh, whatever the uh, uh, dirty uh, liquid that is present after the wash cycle followed by your uh, spinning and then followed by your uh, door open or close based on the requirement so such a sequential process happens in case of any typical um, automatic washing machine control which is fundamentally a sequential control part so you have uh, in case of uh, a fabric or a apparel manufacturing industry you have to control some dc motors for controlling your rolling spinning and then dyeing etc so for that you require some feedback from the uh, thing which will which is uh, connected with the load here uh, so this load uh, will uh, uh, will be measured based on the dc motor torque part and then the feedback is fed through a sensor so you have a speed controller which will give a speed control input to your power converter so the dc motor will activate to and fro even this is a sequential process but but the thing is uh, this is a continuous process um, continuous sequential process but not uh, 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 a sequential process that happens in case of your washing machine like this that's all for the day thank you thank you so much thanks for watching the video